Hi students, my name is Satyam Shankar Sahai and I am the founder of Glad Possible. Today's session is um, basically my take on data interpretation section and what I want to teach you guys is that this is um, you know one of the most important sections in the Glad paper. Although the number of questions that you get is just about 12, Glad 2023, but otherwise 10 to 12 questions, so roughly about 10% of your paper so the total 120 questions, about 12 questions, 10% of the paper would be your DI section. Now, essentially data interpretation is understanding the data, which could be in different forms like the bar charts, um, table format, line charts, uh, histograms, or a caselet form, right? So last two, three years, you've been getting questions in a caselet form. So basically it's a passage and that passage has to be converted into a table format and you know you need to crack the questions then. Now what is a key skill that's required to crack the DI section? Your command with the arithmetic section. Now when I say arithmetic, especially the topics like profit and loss, percentages, time speed, distance, time and work and a little bit about ratios, right? So these are the topics which you need to be hands on with as far as your data interpretation section is concerned right and you have to be quick with your calculation the reason that i'm doing this video today is because i see a lot of fancy teachers taking sessions all across the youtube social media is full of it and what i have observed is that they are solving the question but they're not able to use the shortcuts, right? So it's very important that when you look at the data interpretation section, you are able to understand the data and you are able to apply the shortcuts, right? In one of my sessions that I'm going to, you know, take with you, uh, the CLAT paper 2023, almost 80% of the questions could be done without pen paper, right? It could be solved just by a little understanding of the graph if you've got the table right. Uh, you can look at the analysis session that I've taken. It's important that you uh, have a thorough understanding of various types of charts, right, and be hands-on with the math section. So the series that we are going to begin is uh, two sets every week I'm going to discuss with you. So students of Plant Possible, who are not with Plant Possible, you're most welcome to attend these sessions and take the you know, benefit of it. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is just give you a little bit of idea of you know, what skill is required uh, for cracking the DI set. So I'm going to take a very simple uh, question, right? Put it in a, a table kind of a format, and then we'll look at how we go about solving questions, right? So let's look at this company, HLN. Just one second. So let's look at this company, Hindusan Viva Limited, and we are looking at this data 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Right? And we're looking at, let's say, a turnover, which is of, let's say, the consumer deliverables. And there's not the actual turnover, I'm just putting the numbers 120s, 120 CR, 140 CR, 160 CR, and let's say 190 CR. Okay, so I'm just taking a random data here. And um, now what are the kind of questions that could be asked here? First, what is the overall growth rate from 2020 to 2023? So we're talking about subsequently growth and then we're talking about growth percentage here. So what is the growth here? So growth in terms of the absolute value. Okay, one more thing, the data is in rupees here, right? So we are talking, when we talk about rupees, rupees is always value, right? And when we say value, value means volume into price. So here we are looking at value here. We are not mentioned the volume, we are not mentioned the price here, right? Unless there is a specific question, we are not dealing with this right now. Okay, so what is the overall growth? The overall growth is from 190 CR is the final value and the initial value is 120 CR. So there's just a subtraction that we have to do here, which is nothing but 70 CR. 
correct second what is the growth percentage so basically 12 has become 120 has become 90 so the way to do it is 120 has become 190 so we're looking at ratios here which means that 12 has become 90 so we don't have to deal with 120 190 we just have to deal with a smaller number here which is 12 has become 90 so what is the overall growth rate here it is 7 on 12 right isn't it easier to solve 7 upon 12 then doing a 190 minus 120 upon 120 right so 7 upon 12 what is 7 upon 12 again this is nothing but 6 plus 1 upon 12 right this is nothing but 6 upon 12 plus 1 upon 12 6 by 12 is half of 12 so 6 by 12 is 50 percent and 1 by 12 is 8.33 percent so you have to be comfortable with the ratio so my overall answer here will become 58.33 percent right so this is my growth percentage the next one is the simple annual growth simple annual growth rate so which is my annual growth rate every year so what we are supposed to do here is my overall growth percentage which is 58.33 percent and divided by the number of time periods here now what is the time period here it is the final year minus the initial year so my time period here will be 2023 minus 2020 which is equal to 3 so basically the first time period second time period and the third time period right so final year minus the initial year that makes it 3 so we're looking at 58.33 percent so roughly 58 by 3 so we know that 9 57 by 3 uh, 57 by 3 is 19 right so any answer above 19 percentage and between 20 percentage will be my answer 60 upon 3 is 20 percent so my answer will be between 19 and 20 percent we are going to hunt for an option like this right so you can avoid the solving of the exact amount you can just look at range if you get that range you know you got the answer one second is suppose they ask you what is the um, which year you had the maximum growth rate maximum growth rate now you see here you've grown from 120 to 140 right here you have grown from 140 to 160 here you have grown from 160 to 190 so let's just calculate the growth rate here here again 120 to 140 it is nothing but if you look at ratios here 120 to 140 my ratio here is 12 is to 14 or it is 6 is to 7 or this becomes 1 upon 6 which is equal to 16 point six six percent so this particular thing is a sixteen point six six percent right similarly from 140 to 160 we are 140 to 160 we are looking at 14 becoming 16 or 7 becoming 8 now we should know what is so 7 becoming 8 becomes 1 upon 7 1 upon 7 so 1 upon 7 is nothing but 14.28 percentage right 14.28 it will be 14.28 right 14.28571 anyways exact amount will be 14.28571 it's a recurring non-terminating number but anyways it's 14.28 percent so this is 1 by 7 160 to 190 is nothing but 16 has become 19 or the growth is 3 upon 16. Now we know, if we know this, 1 by 16 is 6.25 percentage. Right? Why it is 1 by 16, 6.25? Because 100 upon 16 will be 50 upon 8 will be 25 upon 4. Right? So this is 6.25. So 3 upon 16 will be equal to 6.25 into 3 that is equal to 18.75 percent right so if you look at the growth rate here the maximum growth rate is from 2022 to 2023 which is of 18.75 percent right so that's your the maximum growth rate is from the period 22 to 23 here one second is that if you just look at these two values here from 120 to 140 and 140 to 160 Although we have calculated the growth rate, but if you look at the absolute figure here, from 120 to 140, we've increased by 20 here. 
and from 140 to 160 we have increased by 20 year so obviously the growth rate from 120 to 140 will be more than 140 to 160 because here we are doing a 20 upon 120 and there we are doing a 20 upon 140 so obviously 20 upon 120 will always be greater than 20 upon 140 because we are dividing by more there so whenever there is a fixed growth the the value which is much lower i mean the denominator will obviously be higher so you can easily say that this growth rate without even calculating will always be more than this growth rate right and had this been 180 you know so 120 140 160 180 you can easily say that this growth rate will be more than this growth rate will be more than this growth rate right so these are the kind of questions that are asked typically in a table format or so basically the skill that we are using here is how to deal with percentages similarly and what we have done is we have linked it to the concept of ratios here now we can also get average here what is the average sales from 2020 to 2023 what is the average so what do we typically do with an average is a, we add all of them right so we do 120 plus 140 plus 160 plus 190 right we add all of them and divide by four now can we play smart here is what we have to we have to see here so what we could possibly do is if you just calculate it is coming to uh, 260 plus 160 is 320 320 plus 190 is equal to 510 so we're looking at 510 divided by 4 here right we are looking at 510 divided by 4 now what is the way that we can play smart with this is just take an approximate value here right you take some value and see what are the pluses and minuses from that value so i'll just you know remove this and make it slightly clear now so we have a 120 here we have a 140 here we have a 160 here and we have a let's say a 180 here so just to make things easy for you now suppose we are supposed to find the we are supposed to find the average here so instead of doing this plus 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 and divided by 4 what we can do is we can take some mean value here and what is a mean value let's take the mean value as 150 let's say or a median value something in between and what we do here is if we have a 140 and a 160 my average will be 150 so if there are two people my average will be 160 right if we have a 120 and a 180 my average will be a 150 right so a counter to 120 is 180 keeps the average same which is at 150 similarly a 140 and a 160 will keep the average at 150 right so when all of them combine the average will be 150 nothing will happen to the average right now let's say this is 190 let's for a second take this is 190 so what is 190 is 10 plus now what happens because of this 10 plus the entire sum gets divided across four people right so what we have to do with the average here is 10 is extra and that gets divided across four people which is equal to 2.5 so my overall average becomes 152.5 right similarly had this been 200 i would have just added a 10 here i would have found my average with this which is coming as 150 and this 20 gets divided this 20 gets divided across four people 20 gets divided across four people which is equal to 5 so my average would have become 150 plus 5 so what i'm trying to say is we have taken convenient values a convenient median point we have seen what the countering is and we have seen for this and we get an overall average right so instead of just adding all of them and dividing it by 4 you could always you know play with common sense and get to the answer immediately so this is a very important skill that you should learn when you're looking at the di section the time that you have to get to the di section is not more than eight minutes and in eight minutes you have to crack 10 questions and get all of them right so the skill of you know getting the answer by using the shortcut is what you need to learn with the di section right so starting from next week every thursday uh, at eight o'clock we will have our session on how to tackle di and for the next two months i'm planning to run this 
try and attend these sessions, right? The skills that you learn in these sessions, you can use for solving questions in the mocks and, you know, DI material. So, so that's, I think, a very good way of improving your data interpretation skill. Please do not leave DI uh, section. Do not leave the questions in the mock. The important thing is that you practice these questions and take it head on rather than leaving it. I've seen very good students who leave the DI section and that's an absolute sin because in the end, right, you will have a difference of five to six marks and that could be a difference between an NLS Bangalore and let's say Rahman or Luria. So you have to be good with this section and get maximum marks, right, in the DI section, all right? So see you next week and we'll get started with these two DI sets every week and I want you to attend these sessions. Thank you.